as a gym owner and I don't own a gym, right? So full disclosure there, but as a business owner, which I own my own business, I always say it's kind of lonely. It's just because most people go to work nine to five, you know, they don't understand what happens when, all right, well, now all of a sudden I can't bring people into my business and I've got, you know, potentially three months ahead of me where I have zero income and other people don't understand like, oh, just go on disability or, or excuse me, go on uh, unemployment, wherever it is. But, you know, you lose everything you've worked for. It's, uh, so it's very challenging and not a lot of people really fully understand what you're going through. So it's kind of cool. You have that network. I guess. Yeah. It, it, that is the, you, you hit it on the head. It, even despite the support and how amazing the, the gym and the community has been and spouses and friends and everything, it still does kind of feel lonely sometimes. And even in, in the group, especially in something like this, where we are so isolated and everything's turned completely upside down it's you have those moments of like am i making the right decisions but you know i've been doing it from the heart and like what i feel is best so at the end of the day whether or not that aligns with people that's fine because i'm continuing my vision and and what i feel is like true to me you know and i kind of hope that gets reflected in everyone else and what you know i get it like things are crazy now and it, you know, you got to change things. That's fine. But at the end of the day, like we'll still be there. You know? Yeah. People decide to come back or whatever, but no, you're, you, you nailed it. It is. It, there's definitely moments where it's like, shit, like what's happening? Hello. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. You know, it's um, so many people make their decisions based on like, let's say what, you know, our society says or what culture says in a lot of ways, I think that's good because society kind of pushes us in a good direction, hopefully depending on the culture that you're in. Um, but oftentimes we're just, we're basing what's important to us on what's important to everyone else, or what we think right. is important to everything else, you know, everyone else. So if we get to sit back and figure out what's truly important to us and make those decisions. Um, I think that's probably the best way to go. So, you know, kudos to you. Thank you. Um, so we're live in, in our members group um, and we'll, we'll get rolling here. So thank you for doing this. Um, just my background, as far as Dan Poe goes, I, uh, when I was early on in coaching, um, you know, it's, there's so many things out there and like gymnastics and this, that, and the other thing and, and mobility and, and trying to help people beyond the workouts. And you were always a reference in any instance where somebody asked me a question of like, Oh, how should I, whatever, I need to work this kink out in my shoulder or you know, just go fitness pain for go there. There's so much great content. Um, and then I met you at power monkey camp in, uh, 2015, 16, I think it was six was the first one and then eight. Um, so nice to connect. Um, so for those of you, those who may not know, give me a little bit of info on who Dan Pope is and how he found CrossFit and your background. Yeah, for sure. So I always say that i um, kind of a meathead at heart. Um, people always laugh at me because I don't really look like a meathead per se. I wish I was more muscular, but I'm, I'm trying, <laughs> right? Um, but anyway, I've always been super into fitness as a young kid. I would be the person in high school where I'd have like a legion of my own friends and we'd be training all over the place. So I had a, a farm, right. That uh, my mother and my, my father owned, and we would take a bunch of like kegs and tires and chains. And we'd be lifting those things, dragging those things. We'd be taking rusty chains to the gym, getting rust all over the floor, putting like a 40 pound chain on one side and like an 85 pound chain on the other side. Cause that's all we had. And trying to do like West side methods and just trying everything. I just love fitness. I love health. You know, it's, it's kind of my thing. So I went to school uh, at Rutgers University for uh, exercise science, and I competed as a pole vaulter. Um, during that time, I did a lot of personal training, a lot of internships involving personal training. I knew the fitness was kind of the place I wanted to be. So when I graduated, I started doing personal training and uh, working as a strength coach full time. And uh, I really loved it. I thought it was great. But one of the things I was finding is I would have a lot of folks that were just painful. And it was tough. And I think this is more of the time, you know, as opposed to um, the problem we're seeing today. It's just that I didn't find a lot of physical therapists that were great working with the patient population that I liked, right? So you would have, um, let's say I'd be working with an individual, say he's a bit older, um, 
55, 60 years old, uh, do some kettlebell swings with them, back gets sore. Like, all right, well, let's go see the physical therapist, make sure something is not going um, badly, right? And you go to the physical therapist and, you know, the therapist would tell me like, of course, you're, you know, your uh, athlete got hurt. They shouldn't be doing kettlebell swings, right? And you're pretty, pretty soon getting the same advice for every movement, like, oh, shouldn't deadlift, shouldn't bench press, <laughs> you know? Um, so that became a pain. And eventually I was like, you know, I want to try to figure out some of this stuff myself because it, it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. I love fitness. I want to be able to help these people out. Fitness is obviously good for people. You know, even if it does cause injuries, I think it probably has uh, more benefits and negatives. So I'm like, yeah, heck, I'm going to go to physical therapy school and kind of figure this out myself. Um, and that's kind of what I did. And through the entire time I continued to coach fit or excuse me, um, uh, coach do personal training at the time I was doing, uh, CrossFit coaching at uh, CrossFit Tribe. I don't know if you're familiar with those guys back in the day, Steve Liberati and uh, Pat Burns was the head coach uh, back then. And uh, finished up PT school and I worked very quickly on kind of building my, my niche, my niche, however you want to say it, in the world of fitness, right? So if you're um, working out aggressively and you want some help, if something kind of breaks down or gets irritated, you know, how can I help that person and how can I help people continue doing what they love uh, for the long term, you know, and that's what I do on a regular basis. Now I'm a physical therapist out of uh, champion physical therapy and performance. It's in Boston, Massachusetts. It's a, it's a phenomenal facility because it's got sports performance for baseball. So we have actual baseball coaches in there. Uh, we have a strength conditioning facility. So the entire thing is a big gym and we have physical therapy layered on top and we have a great network with local, you know, surgeons, a lot of, um, fitness people, personal trainers, CrossFit gyms, and, it's just a really cool place where um, we call it a sandbox, you know, so we can just kind of experiment, get people better, you know, improve our methods and have a great time while we're doing it. So that's cool. So you started with uh, personal training and getting frustrated with the PTs telling you, Oh, can't do this. Shouldn't do this. Did they ever give you a why or was it just, uh, we, we don't really know, but we're just going to say, Hey, don't do that. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And to be honest, I'm not really sure. And, you know, as a young guy with a big ego at the time, I don't know <laughs> if I listened to them. They may have, but I, I don't really recall them saying that. I just remember them saying like, yeah, well, you shouldn't deadlift. That's why they tweak the back or tweak that side joint or whatever it is, you know. Um, so I don't think much answer. No, I really don't yeah. think there was much. So. And that kind of led you down the path of, hey, I want to keep doing what I'm doing and helping these people, but the in the best way possible. So taking your, your knowledge of personal training and mixing it with, you know, I'm going to solidify this with PT. Yeah. And that's kind of where you're at now. Yep. And it's uh it's kind of a full spectrum thing. You know, I, I had a uh, patient the other day. I'm not even sure if you can call them patients because honestly we call them clients, you know, it's, yeah. they've got performance goals. They also have some pain problems that are mixed in there, you know, and basically I did a full evaluation. He's got a little bit of shoulder pain, but he wants to get into more Olympic weightlifting. So we're doing a ton of mobility. I coach him through a bunch of the lifts. I'm writing programming for him. Um, so it's, it's really kind of a hybrid thing that I do. Um, but yeah, the big thing is like, let's figure out how to do this in a way that's conducive to health, you know, right. and performance. I have no problem with people chasing big weights and numbers, but um, let's see how we can make it as safe as possible. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you got, you have a lot of really good content, um, you know, surrounding that type of stuff, which I love sharing. Um, what, Thank you. Where did you find CrossFit? What, how, what did that look like? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Did you know I, I did straw man for years? I was really into that. No. Nah. Well, I, uh, I, like I said, I used to work out on my dad's farm and we would just lift anything that was heavy, you know, and push things around and drag things. So I always saw people on TV, ESPN, uh, strong man, the sport where they're picking up stones and lifting cars and just doing crazy stuff like that. I was like, man, this is awesome. <laughs> so, you know, I, I learned more about it and started training. Um, and then I've kind of found, uh, I think it was Murundi muscle. Uh, Jesse Murundi was a great strong man, unfortunately he passed away years ago. Uh, but he had an awesome forum where you could find similar people that really liked training strongman. Cool. So at the time I was in Northern New Jersey. Um, I kind of went back and forth from North to South. I was, um, raised in Southern New Jersey kind of by you guys. And then I moved North after graduating from Rutgers and uh, formulated a really cool training group. So a bunch of like, I don't know, like woolly mammoths. I call these guys like rhinoceros just because like big, <laughs> strong people, you know, and I was like the little guys, like the little right. tyke, tyke kind of tagging along. 
Um, but it was an awesome group of people. Obviously, there's not much money in strongman, even at the very top. I mean, obviously, Half Thor and Eddie Hall are, are moving into fighting to try to pay the bills, which, you know, that's fine to each their own. But it's, uh, it's a little unfortunate that there's not much money in that for them to stay with what they love. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a ton of fun. I really enjoyed it. And then what happened is I moved to Southern New Jersey. And um, this is when I was doing physical therapy. And I still trained strongman, and I was just kind of getting my friends to do it with me. But there wasn't a big community down there. Uh, I was really having a hard time finding other people that like strongman. And then I, uh, I got into CrossFit. And this was actually at the, the very end of my stint in uh, North Jersey when I was still personal training full time. Um, and I wasn't really training full time CrossFit. I would just do like, I don't know, Cindy or something like that on the fly and then go back to my regular training. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, um, I heard about the CrossFit um, sectionals, I guess, at that point, you know, and I started trying to do some training, mixing it with my, my uh, strongman training. And uh, I actually uh, ended up going to sectionals. This was years ago. I don't remember, maybe like 10-ish years ago. And then uh, I qualified for regionals, I guess it was. And I met uh, Steve Liberati there um, from Steve's Club and Steve's Paleo Goods. Yeah. And uh, he's like, you know, we have a gym in, in Philadelphia. Maybe you should come by and check it out and train sometimes. So I was like, all right, man, I love this stuff. You know, we're a bunch of meatheads trying to exercise for time. This is fun. Um, so, yeah, I started hanging out with Steve and going to his gym. Just picked it up, really loved it. Uh, started coaching there in the future. And uh, that really kicked off my passion for CrossFit because it was it's kind of everything I wanted. I, I love exercise. I have exercise ADD. The CrossFit community loves wellness and fitness um, constantly being made fun of for being so fit, you know, which is not a bad thing to be made fun of. I think it should be right. as a badge of honor, you know? Um, but yeah, that was, that was uh, exactly what I wanted. And I, I found that in CrossFit and to be honest, I didn't know what I wanted, but I just, when I got there, I was like, yeah, this is good. I like this. So. Yeah. So your, your introduction to it was more of another, we'll, we'll say it was like a tool you liked just you have this picture of fitness right and it doesn't have to be one thing but crossfit was another tool that you could have in the arsenal mixed in with your strong man and you saw some benefits between you know both or how it supplemented you know maybe some things that you were missing out that strong man workouts were having yeah for sure i think part of it was probably that competitive side of things i didn't have i mean i, I competed for maybe four years at a pretty high level for strong man and uh, I love the competition aspect of it. I was, you know, pole vaulter back in college at Rutgers University. And then um, competing was something I still wanted to do very greatly at that time. And uh, since I didn't have the buddies to do strongman, and I saw all these guys at CrossFit Tribe doing the same thing as me, but doing it in a different sport, I'm like, heck, I can, I can do this. And since I had a little background in being strong, um, barely strong, I'm not going to say I was that strong, but um, it kind of carried me into – CrossFit well, you know, and plus I was an endurance athlete back in the day. So it was a really cool mix and it allowed me to kind of rekindle that passion for endurance related activities, you know, as opposed to just work for 60 to 90 seconds max and then be done, right. which is what a, a strongman event is, you know. So speaking of competing, I actually found some pictures. You competed at CrossFit Off the Grid 2012, <laughs> yeah. the annual open challenge. So I remember Mark would do these big uh this was for the open right the crossfit open yeah i don't even know if, if that was related to the open or not but i do remember that competition for sure i was gonna bring that up yeah you got a you got a little blog here on it and everything so that's oh gosh, that was so long ago <laughs> that's the gym it used to be blue and white um the rig this rig is still here this section you can see that's still there uh we've made some uh, you know no more pegboards uh, we've made some changes over the year, but there is you in the gym. There's, we actually have these old boxes too. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was great. Uh, do you know Paul Bono? Yeah, he's actually, he moved back mm, a couple months ago before all this. COVID. Yeah, for sure. Um, so for people who don't know Paul, he's one of uh, our good friends, I guess. Um, and Paul is a phenomenal CrossFitter. They were number two at the CrossFit Games as a team. Uh, CrossFit Milford. This was years ago as well, but um, very strong guy. And he actually competed this competition too. And it's the first time I met him. And it's funny because there's a triple or triple or five time broad jump was one of the events here. So Paul got like first through third on every single event, except for the broad jump, because Paul's like five foot four or something like that. <laughs> so he got like 67th place. Right. And I ended up beating him out. You know, I got third and I think he got fourth place. 
<laughs> and that was the first time I met him as well. So wow. it's a, a tough competition for him. <laughs> I'm assuming this is one of the broad jump. Uh, yeah, that's it. Right? And, that's pretty that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. 2012, throwing it back. Um, Big time. So what well, – so, so CrossFit, strongman, you know, and just a passion for fitness in general. What – before COVID, what was your – what has your fitness looked like? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the competitive aspect has kind of died down a little bit. <clears throat> and I was training and still competing a little bit in CrossFit until about, let's say, maybe two years ago. Uh, I was at a CrossFit gym. Um, but the other thing is that we have our own community within our gym, right? It's a strength conditioning facility, but we have adult fitness and, you know, and a bunch of people in there training and working hard. And I really wanted to be part of that community. And at the time I was uh, training at champion physical therapy and I would do, let's say heavy five rep max deadlift. And then uh, the next day I'd go to a CrossFit gym and we do heavy five rep max deadlift again. I'm like, I, I can't keep doing this. This is not good for my body. I kind of have to choose one or the other. Um, so I went with champion, obviously that's where I work and I want to be part of that community. So my goals have changed a little bit over the past couple of years. Um, and I probably have a training program, um, that looks a lot like a power lifter with some bodybuilding and some gymnastics movements in there. Um, I also incorporate a lot of funky stuff in there to try to stay kind of healthy and fit. So I do a lot of basic throwing, change of direction, crawling type stuff, more functional type exercises. And I also am doing a little more running nowadays, um, because I enjoy that as well. You know, like yeah. I said, I have an exercise ADD and I have a hard time just doing one thing. So, yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a good thing too. Cause I think with any Avenue, it's easy to go down the rabbit hole and kind of make that your focus and you lose sight of all the other things that bring you joy, whether that's bike riding or running or, but the cool thing is when you look back and you go, Oh wait, no, they all kind of help each other. So whatever modality you choose as your base, right? You sh that should be something that complements everything else. I, that's something that shifted for me pretty, pretty majorly. You know, I didn't have a background and I grew up skating and surfing. Like that was, <laughs> I was an individual sport person. I never played team sports. Um, that was, that's what drove me. So when I found CrossFit, it was like, what is this? This is, crazy wild it's still me versus me but there's also all these other people you know and it's it my personal journey has kind of been reflected in you know my life how i've grown has it's it shows in the, in the gym in in what i do you know at for fun for fitness so it's, it's kind of you know you, you gotta almost get to a point of with CrossFit or whatever it is, break out of that as that's the only way. Cause it's not, it's just, like I said earlier, it's just a tool, right? So I think for us anyway, and, and off the grid, that's the foundation, but I want everybody to go out and do Spartan races and Ironmans mm -hmm. and 5k runs and whatever, do everything, have fun with everything, but know that, you know, whatever your training is at the gym will make you better for everything else. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I really like that idea. That's kind of what we have a champion as well. Um, it's more individualized programming stuff, but you've got people who love, let's say, you, know, you brought up the endurance athlete and you also have some strength athletes and you've got some folks there that they just want to be healthy and fit and other people, they want to, you know, get jacked, you know, it's, there's so many different goals that people have and they're all bringing it to the same place. And it's cool. I like that a lot. Um, during quarantine, what, uh, what have you been doing to stay sane and, and healthy? Yeah. So I, I have fitness pain free, right. Um, and that's my own online business. Uh, on top of that, I didn't stop seeing patients. So, um, uh, physical therapists in Massachusetts, were still considered an essential business. So what I did is I just really drastically cut the amount of people I was seeing. And it was really just for people who really, really needed it for the most part. So, uh, post-op people were kind of the only people I was seeing. And then uh, I've been going in once or twice a week, uh, starting to do maybe three times a week next week or the following. So things are ramping up. But on top of that, I, uh, as you guys know, and just with uh, what Nick has said here, I, I do run fitness pain free and there's an endless amount of work to be done there. So it's, I just kind of switched gears and I'm still working just as much. It's just that I'm 
working on my educational courses a whole lot more, working on blog content, working on podcasts, all that stuff. Um, this morning I was just uh, doing research on the knee, the meniscus, our favorite uh, friend, the meniscus, uh, putting together a newer cor- course for fitness and rehab professionals that work with athletes who have knee pain. So that's, uh, it's been my jam, you know? Yeah. I, I will always forever, uh, send out that resource and highly recommend it. There's so much, definitely sign up for the newsletter. There's so much good content every day and just, you know, you're always seeking, you know, it it never seems like you're complacent. It's like you're open to, you know, ideas and and making things better. Not just like, Oh, here it is. We found the fix. It's like, Oh, maybe, but let's, let's explore that a little more. So. Yeah, for sure, man. You bring up a good point too, because you know, I'm, I sit in my own little place, you know, and I, I feel like I maybe have a, a good handle of helping athletes that have pain, but I'm seeing everything from my vantage point, which is as a physical therapist, and I'm seeing people that have pain, you know, I don't coach anymore. I used to, but I think coaches have really, really good experience because they're seeing the average person. And in general, when you're a coach, you don't see many injuries. I mean, you may find some aches and pains here and there. Um, but from the physical therapist vantage point, you see like someone who does CrossFit that has a pretty severe injury and you see a lot of severe injuries. So your thought process is going to be a lot different in terms of what fitness is. And I think that was the major reason for people hating fitness in the first place. Physical therapists were just seeing injury after injury after injury that came from, you know, deadlifting and automatically thought, Oh, deadlifting is bad. Right. Or they're not in the gym watching people do thousands of deadlifts a day and, and doing fine, you know? So it's important that uh, health professionals like myself, take information and advice from coaches and people from all different networks, you know, to make themselves better and get a more accurate, you know, view of what's actually occurring in the world outside of what you're seeing every day. You know, I think, honestly, I think you guys should be the first line of defense against injury before, you know, they cut because it seems like it, Almost like how nutrition, the view of nutrition has changed over the past couple of years. I feel like there's a shift and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that people are becoming more aware that, okay, I don't need to go to the doctor and get cut immediately. There are, there's steps I can do to avoid that. And there's probably a better alternative. It might take some work, but people like you are going to help them along that, that journey. Yeah, for sure. I, um, I've kind of changed my viewpoint over the course of time. So, you know, as a personal trainer turned physical therapist, I was like, well, exercise is the cure for everything. And, you know, hell bent on trying to rehab everyone, regardless of what they have, you know? And I guess as I read more and learned more and found other good healthcare providers and other good surgeons, you start to realize that there's definitely a case where surgery is better, you know, and there's definitely a case where you should try some more conservative rehab first. I think the problem happens is when someone, you know, has some sort of pain problem and they see the wrong person first. Right. So let's see the, you see a surgeon who's not a big fan of physical therapy. And to be honest, there's the more than I'd like to, to say that I know that don't like physical therapy very much, despite what research shows. Um, and they perform outdated techniques and that's not a good thing. But the other thing you'll find is that there are some really good surgeons out there that will push, you know, more conservative exercise. I got a couple, uh, physical or excuse me, uh, surgeon friends locally that I refer to that do CrossFit. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those situations where when someone comes in, um, you have to give them what's best for them. Right. So, I mean, the meniscus is a really good example. If you have a traumatic tear, it's big. Um, and there's an opportunity to get that repaired. You probably want to get that repaired and you probably want to do it sooner, you know, but if it's a more, let's say a degenerative tear, then you probably shouldn't get surgery for that first, if ever, you know, especially if you have some arthritis with it and that's, you know, definitely do physical therapy. But that surgery is so common in a population that probably doesn't need it, right? Or should have tried something else. So I, I think it's about finding the right people. And to be honest, it, it kind of sucks to be a consumer, man. There's so much conflicting information out there about pain and injury and what to do. It, it's just really hard. And, you know, that's part of what I obviously try to do with Fitness Pain Free, although I feel like in a lot of ways I end up confusing people too, you know, sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I do my best to try to guide people in the right direction. Yeah, that, I mean, that's all you can do. That's, I think, no matter, you know, for you as a therapist and me as a gym owner, we're just trying to prescribe the best fix means, whatever that is for that person, you know, wh- whatever their, their prescription needs to be. And 
I yeah, hopefully we can do it with you know like you were saying like the the right corrective steps, but maybe you might need surgery, and that's it. It's all case by case. Yeah, or maybe both. You know, maybe you need a little bit of everything. You know, depends. We just we do our best. <laughs> um, so throughout this, I, it's weird now because the conversation has shifted a lot. COVID's kind of on the back burner. Um, it's not really being talked about anymore, which is strange. But throughout this whole experience. Has there, has there been anything positive for you? Have you found hobbies or things that you kind of, you know, put on the back burner? I know you're, you're, you've still been working, but um, what have been some, some positive takeaways for, from this uh, experience? Oh, I've got a couple. Uh, for one, being able to take this time off. I, I don't know if I've told you this, but uh, my wife's pregnant and uh, July oh, 23rd, congrats. we have a baby. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very awesome. much. Awesome. Yeah. So first and foremost, this has allowed me to prepare more for that, you know, we're doing all sorts of things. So last weekend we spent the entire time researching like baby formula, you know, um, kind of making this nursery behind us, you know, you can't really see it, I guess, but it's behind that. Door. Behind. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yep, yep. There we go. That's uh, awesome. Oh, you know that's all about that. Nah. <laughs> yeah so uh, that's been amazing the other part is that uh, I have a lot of things I wanted to accomplish with fitness pain free and part of it was that I, I still do the whole like 40 hour grind as a physical therapist writing programs you know seeing people in person so it's very very challenging to do and you know make an entire business on the back end of your you know regular full-time job so I've been able to get out a lot of information and, and kind of make the backbone put the foundation in place these past few months, which has been phenomenal. And the last thing I will say is that um, I have a bit of a complex where, um, and I think a part of it's good, so I don't want to make it sound terrible, but it probably <laughs> started, you know, when I was a, a, a young kid, my parents just worked like maniacs, you know, they had their own business and they're working all the time, uh, every weekend, you know, every day. Um, and I just kind of got this thought process that I always need to be working at all times. And yeah. when work was kind of taken away from me, at least in some ways, right? Because I wasn't able to see as many patients. I was freaking out. I was like, all right, how can I make the most of my time? And there was also a big expectation of like, okay, I'm probably not going to have a chunk of time like this again for maybe the rest of my life. You know, when is there going to be a pandemic where it completely drops your, your patient care for months at a time? It's like, I need to get going. I don't have much time to get everything done that I need to. So initially I was completely overwhelmed, which sounds funny because I was seeing less patients at the time, trying to get as much as I possibly can done. And I have, but the other part over the course of time is that I've been able to kind of relax more and uh, kind of feel like I'm not as stressed out, you know, and I'm a big fan of, uh, I don't know, mental health in general and uh, mindfulness, you know, and I always have a hard time with doing nothing and uh, kind of the people I look up to would say, well, if you have a hard time doing nothing, you got to practice doing nothing, you know, and every time I do nothing, I just feel stressed out, you know, yeah. Um, but not having as much looming over my head has been really helpful from a mental health standpoint, I think. And part of it's like, I'm not hell bent on getting everything done. Like it, it will get done over the course of time. I don't, not like, hopefully I'm not going to die by the time I'm 40. I don't need to have my entire <laughs> life's work done, you know, at that point. So that's been nice. When, when did it set in for you that it was okay to take a breath? Oh, not until a few weeks ago, you know, and I yeah. can't say that there's a real specific time. It's just that you know, week after week went by and we'd have meetings, you know, at, at champion with my, my boss and wrestling employees and we'd just kind of be, well, we're still kind of waiting, not sure what the next step is. And that just kept on going on and on. And I kept on pushing my business and it just kind of forced me to, to chill a little bit. And after a while, it's like, well, it's okay to chill, you know? And it's kind of like, wow, I got to rent back up again. I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Which it's That's, good though. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I, I've relate so hard on all those things. Just the constant feeling like I need to be doing something or what could I be doing better? Um, it's not okay to have time downtime. Um, and you know, that for it, it set in finally, probably, you know, similar a couple of weeks ago, I was like, you know what, like take a breath. Cause it's, as important as the the gym is to me because it is like, like that's my life and my business but you know there's also me and like everything else i enjoy in my family and and you know i had to tell myself like nick the, the gym's gonna be fine it'll be there you've worked hard enough 
you've set a, a good foundation. You have an amazing community that's supporting you. Take a day. <laughs> Relax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> but I, th I think that's just, that's for, for, maybe it's a South Jersey thing, um, <laughs> you know, like, but people like you and me, that that's our, that's our, our mode. It's hard to deviate from that. I know. You know, in some ways I think it's a little sad and I think you'll see this in a lot of people who have achieved like really high things. Sometimes the motivations behind why you achieve those aren't phenomenal. Right. I mean, part of it's that you have the stress and anxiety of feeling like I'm not valuable unless I work harder than everyone else around me, you know, or like to show my worth to the world, I need to work like a maniac because otherwise I'm not a worthy person, you know? And obviously those aren't healthy viewpoints, but the other part is like, you know, life is hard and you have to push and that's how you get to the top in a lot of ways. So, you know, I can see how, you know, people are pressured into that. And unfortunately they're probably plagued with a lot of anxiety and stress, but it hopefully makes the world a little better, you know, in the process. But the other part is like, if you just maybe like take it down a notch and, you know, produce whatever you're doing at 80% as opposed to hundred percent, you might be a lot happier and not so stressed yeah. out and still really help the world. Right. So, I mean, you know, I think at, at first it was necessary because we all kind of, it wasn't something we planned for. So immediately it was like, okay, what's our, how can we achieve excellence? What's our best thing to do now? And how can we best help everybody given the circumstances? And that kind of evolved over, the first couple of weeks, but you know, I feel like we, we accomplished a lot and, and still have, and now it's like, okay, we've been planning for, like you were saying, like ramping back up. All right. We're allowed to do outdoor classes at the gym now. So we're, we're starting those tomorrow. We're preparing for that. And, and kind of this week will be a trial period, but you know, we'll, we'll figure out times and what everything's going to look like and logistics and all those things. But, and then thinking up forward, okay, group classes back in the gym, how many people can I have? How do I have to space that out? Equipment, this, that, and the other. There's just a lot, you know, ramping back up into this, you know, coming out of it type thing. Um, yeah, for sure. It's a lot, man. <laughs> keep up the good work, though. You got you to keep pushing, right? I mean. Thank you. Yeah. We're, we're, we're getting there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, what's the strangest thing you've done during quarantine? Oh, God. Strangest thing I've done during quarantine. Uh, we've probably picked up a, an unhealthy habit of just eating more comfort food. Um, I don't know if that's strange necessarily. I don't know if I have a great answer for you, but we always have pizza on Thursdays. Uh, we have grilled cheese once a week. I feel like we're, we're crowding in our um, healthy days with more cheat days, and it's, it's kind of turning to crap. But, you know, my wife is pregnant, so we're gaining weight. <laughs> it's kind of an excuse. Uh, but, yeah, eating a lot, probably eating uh, – uh, some more fun meals and stuff. Although, you know, sometimes hit or miss, you try to make something with let's say fish sauce and you put way too much fish sauce in there and then you just ruin mm -hmm. your entire meal. But, um, I guess that's kind of it, you know? Yeah. Um, that's fun. Yeah. We, we've been, I justify it by saying we're supporting local businesses. Um, so we've been doing our best to support as many <laughs> local businesses as possible. That's good. Us too. Yeah. <laughs> so as a, uh, when, so when's your wife's due date? Uh, July 23rd. Oh, wow. Soon. I know. Yeah. Yep. Coming so up, man. Coming up. Her. Looking forward to that, yeah, uh, that dad bod. September. Are you September? Yeah, right. September. Nice. Congrats, man. You ready? Looks like you got the, the nursery ready to go. Yeah, I'm right. Um, this room's done. We're we're good to go. I got a adult bed here, crib there, because I know we'll probably be spending a lot of time in here. But that's nah, it's it's gonna be cool. I'm excited. It's gonna be that's a good. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm uh, as it gets closer and closer, my excitement turns into being terrified more and more. I'm still <laughs> very excited, you know. It's yeah. new, you know. It's it's there's no playbook on it. You can, you know, study and prepare as much as possible but it really just comes down to day-to-day -day and execution it's yeah we'll see you know, man <laughs> all new things it's all good stuff yeah. uh what do you what do you miss most about jersey what are some uh some wawa trips or uh, <laughs> wawa is phenomenal um to be honest it's it's really friends and family you know 
Um, I have a lot of really good friends I've made down there that I stay in touch with. We still like text regularly. It'll be like a hundred text messages go back and forth between all of us by the day's end every day, you know? Um, and we try to meet up a couple times a year. Cool. Same thing goes with my family. I'll probably go down somewhere between six and 10 times a year. I haven't recently just because of COVID. Um, but yeah, I miss all those guys tremendously. You know, I also miss, uh, the smell on a New Jersey turnpike, you know, when you cross from new New York down in New Jersey. Uh, just kidding. That's probably the worst part of New Jersey. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> a ton of pride there. You know, I have pride in some of the crap, you know, I mean, I was born in Camden, New Jersey and, uh, you know, I got a lot of pride for Camden, despite it being like such a tough town and it's yeah. gotten a lot better over the course of time. But you know, um, yeah, I miss New Jersey. I miss my, my friends, my family. I miss Wawa's, you know, hoagies were a big thing. They don't do hoagies here. They have, uh, steak sandwiches up here, which is a cheese steak, basically, you know, uh, so they do things a little bit differently, but I gotta be honest, they have a, a similar flair, you know, to New Jersey. It's just a little bit different, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure if one is worse than the other, I guess you've heard like mass holes, you know, and right, yeah, yeah. Jersey's known for road rage and all that. Yeah. Um, I don't know who's got it worse. You know, I think uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of good people in there. They're just not outwardly as friendly as some other States, you know? It's a, it's an East coast thing. It really is. Yeah. I went to, uh, for sure. Uh, sorry to cut you off there. Um, I moved to Colorado over a few years and that's another awesome place. But, um, the way I describe the difference in people's like friendliness in Colorado versus, um, East coast. Right. Um, and to be honest, it's probably even more friendly in certain Southern States and stuff is that like, if you go to a a Starbucks on the New Jersey turnpike, like, right, the pull off, go to the bathroom, get a Starbucks, you know, and if you call it like a a medium and be like, Oh, it's a grande. They don't look you in the eyes, (laughs) give you your money and you go, you know, I went to a Starbucks in Colorado and they're like, Oh, where are you from? You don't sound like you're around here. Oh, New Jersey. That's awesome. Do you want a free cookie? I'm like, what? Yeah. I want a cookie. (laughs) Free cookies. It's like, man, you guys are really nice. Um, but what I will say about East coast versus, uh, some of the places in Colorado, and I can't say like everyone is, you know, a different individual, but there's a lot of outwardly nice to you in Colorado when, it, when I can't read that person, it doesn't really seem hundred percent like they actually want to be nice to me. Whereas when you're in, you know, Massachusetts or New Jersey, you're going to get probably how that person feels, you know, and they don't feel uh, badly about it right off know? the bat, <laughs> but there's good people, both places, you know, I don't want to yeah. discredit either population, I guess. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate your time. It was nice to connect with you. Um, Keep doing the good work. Uh, You know, if I'll highly recommend fitness pain free to everyone, Uh, check that out for sure. Sign up to the the newsletter Um, and good luck with, with the baby. Yeah. Thank you. And you as well, man, September, I'll, uh, I guess I'll look to Facebook for some pictures, you know, sure. and, uh, you know, share some experiences, you know, I guess I'll be yeah. in the trenches a little sooner than you. So if I learn anything, yeah, we'll, have, <laughs> we'll have a good uh, reference point here. Yeah. I have a bunch of friends that are kind of doing the same thing. And I feel like we're all kind of like getting each other prepared. So, uh, we'll see, man. I'm excited. Awesome.